What's up guys? If you're building front end apps, you should be messing with deployment as little as possible and you should not be paying for hosting. So in this video, I'm going to show you a free, easy, fast way to deploy your front end apps. And you can do this with either a framework like React or Angular or just vanilla HTML, CSS and JavaScript. That is to say no framework. We're also going to cover how to connect a domain to your app which is super easy with this method. So let's get into it. Okay, we'll get this done with a tool called Firebase. And I'm here on the homepage, firebase.google.com. This is a tool made by Google, which offers a whole ecosystem for web and mobile development. But in this case, we're gonna keep it simple and just use the hosting feature. So the first thing you're going to want to do is click this get started button, which will prompt you to log in. If you're not logged in, I already am, but it will link directly with your Google account. So it's easy. Once you get that done, you'll be taken to the projects page. You're going to want to add a new project through this web interface right here. So add project. Uh, I'm going to call mine test deployment, obviously call it whatever you want. And uh, I will keep Google Analytics enabled because that just gives us a bunch of free data around people visiting our site and so on. So as this creates, let's just set up our fake app. And I'll do that by creating a directory called fake HTML. By the way, I'll show you how to do this with both plain HTML and then a framework. And it'll be uh, super fast to, to show you each one. In this fake HTML folder, I'm going to create an index.html file. And then I'll open that with my code editor, VS Code. Now that I'm in here, I'm just going to put in some uh, totally improper HTML, but uh, just basically to demonstrate how this works. So this is my app in a div. And then when I open that in the browser, it will just display the text. So that's about it. And back over in the Firebase console, our new project is ready. So I'm just going to hit continue and that will take us right to the home page. Now over on the left sidebar, here are, you know, all the features we have within Firebase and I'm going to click on hosting because that's the one we care about for this video. Now I'll just click the get started button and it gives me instructions on, you know, exactly what I have to do. You're going to want to copy and paste this into your terminal npm install g firebase tools. I already have that, but that will basically just give us the ability to access all of Firebase's features from the command line by prefixing our command with the word Firebase, like so. Um, hitting next, here are two things we need to do. We need to log into our Firebase account from the command line. You can copy it by clicking here and then just pasting that in like so. And again, I'm already logged in, so I will skip that step. Now we initialize our project with this command, Firebase init. I am gonna copy this one and paste it in. So it'll open this command line interface. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna go arrow down to hosting, hit the space bar to select that option and then hit enter. Now I'm gonna link it with that project we created in our web UI uh, by selecting it here again with the arrow keys just to find that test deployment. It'll ask for our public directory, which is the directory of files being served. By default, it's called public, but here we don't have a subdirectory, so I'm just deleting that word public and making it our root directory and hitting enter. I'm gonna hit no for this one. That's for single page apps and then not overwrite my code I've already written. Okay, we are ready to go. So next, as we'll see here, we just run this command, Firebase deploy and deployment is complete. So it'll give us a hosting URL here, obviously uh, not a URL we wanna use, but by clicking on that, we can see that our app is already deployed. It's that easy. You literally just do Firebase init, Firebase deploy, that's it. So next I'm gonna show the framework method. I'm gonna use a React app, but you could do this for any different framework. Uh, if you don't wanna see this part, you can just skip ahead to the domain part. Okay, essentially what I'll do is just create a new React app with the create react app uh, tool and call it fake react. Okay, that finished loading. So now I'm just gonna follow the instructions here, change into my directory and then yarn start. Yarn by the way is the same as NPM run command wise. And uh, so I'm just starting that up and then I can see my 
default app template load in the browser. With our development server running, we can see a little message displayed to create a production build, use yarn build. And effectively, that's what we're gonna need to do before deploying our app. So I'm just gonna, to demonstrate, run that command yarn build. Now, every time this happens, it creates a new build folder, which is ready to deploy. So if I hit LS to show all my folders, uh, there's now a build folder that's been created. So that folder is essentially what I wanna use as my public directory. So if I run the Firebase init command on this React directory and select the same option hosting, and I'm going to use the same project. So effectively override our previous deploy with our vanilla JavaScript test deployment. And now this is the important step. What do you want to use as your public directory? It's going to be that build directory. So I'm typing in build manually, hitting enter. And uh, we will make this one a single page app. And uh, we do not want to override our index.html. That is all done. Now we just do the same command Firebase deploy. It takes a little bit longer this time, but when I open our hosting URL and refresh, it's now our React app. So that's pretty cool how easy it is to build and then deploy this React app. One caveat, you have to be careful to run Yarn Build every time before you do the Firebase deploy or it will be deploying an old version of your app. Yeah, just remember to do it, I guess. Okay, now with our uh, React app deployed, uh, welcome back vanilla JavaScript people. If you skipped ahead, we are gonna link our domain. So this works the same way for React apps and plain uh, JavaScript apps. So I'm just gonna show it once. Back over in our console, uh, if I refresh, I can see that the hosting screen is now populated with our uh, list of deployments. And what I'm gonna want to do is go to this blue button, add custom domain. Now you can buy a domain through any registrar. Usually they're around $12 for a .com domain. Uh, there's not many .com domains left that are good. So uh, here's a few of mine that I have. And one I bought is codedrip.tech. So I'm gonna just link this one uh, as an example to our uh, template React app that we just deployed uh, just to show you guys how to do this. So I'm copying this URL and then I'm simply just pasting it in here. I think I already said this, but you can use any domain registrar. Uh, Google Domains is just one that I like because the interface is nice and uh, you actually get to skip this second verify ownership step here uh, when you use Google Domains. That's not hard to do though if you don't. The important part though is right here. We're on the quick setup mode. What I'm gonna wanna do is copy these two records and put them into my domain DNS. So I do that by clicking on my domain. I go to DNS and again, this will be slightly different if you're using a different registrar. Then I scroll to the bottom and I create a custom resource record. And I wanna create uh, essentially an A record matching this IP address. So looking at this field host, uh, a little trick here is the at symbol makes it a self-referential uh, host name. So it will just point to our domain name when it's an at. So we leave it as that, we paste it in here, and then we take the second one, we click the little plus, and then we paste it in here, just like that. Then we hit the blue add button. And now if you can see this message, the changes are saved, but they could take up to 48 hours to uh, take effect. Um, in fact, I'm actually just gonna try it now and see if it already works, because sometimes it's really fast. It did work, which is which is cool. Sometimes it's instant, but you'll see that the HTTPS is not yet activated. So that will take a little bit longer, but you guys are gonna have to take my word for it that it will uh, convert to HTTPS within those 48 hours. So you just have to wait for that part. But effectively, that's that's all it takes, guys. You just hit finish, and then your your domain is linked just like that. So just a quick recap: all we have to do, Firebase init, point to the correct folder, whether that is uh, build or just our root directory. And then we deploy and then we just link the domain. So it's really easy guys. And uh, I hope you can follow this guide and, uh, and deploy your front end apps quickly, easily, and for free. So that's it guys. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and I will catch you guys soon.